This is News 25 with Missy Kohler. Local news with Deanna O'Donnell. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. News 25 is also brought to you by Silver State Health, Pahrump's exclusive pediatric care clinic. Call 775-505-1214 for an appointment. Good evening, I'm Missy Kohler. Today is Friday, May 21st, and this is News 25. Recently captured fugitive Jose Manuel Bautista was in court this morning after being on the run since 2016. Bautista was arrested in 2016 in connection with the sexual assault of a 17-year-old student. At the time of his arrest, Bautista was employed by the Nye County School District as a paraprofessional assistant. Bautista was taken into custody after the sheriff's office received an initial report from the student indicating that she was sexually assaulted by the then 28-year-old Bautista. The investigation revealed that Bautista had allegedly engaged in lewd conversations with the victim on social media before taking her to his home. Investigators also learned that Bautista was reportedly under the influence of narcotics when he engaged in unlawful sexual acts upon the student. In an interview with Bautista, he allegedly admitted to detectives that he had engaged in sexual misconduct with the student. Bautista was released on bail, cut his court-imposed tracking device, and fled. Bautista was once again arrested after being on the run since 2016. Detectives coordinated with the U.S. Marshals Pacific Southwest Regional Fugitive Task Force and their Mexican foreign field and located him in Guadalajara, Mexico. He was deported by Mexican authorities and was arrested May 6th at McCarran Airport by Nye County Sheriff's Office detectives. In Judge Wonker's courtroom today, Bautista's defense attorney, Jason Ernst, asked for a status check on the case in two weeks. He said that he felt like there would be a resolution in the case within that time frame. Bautista fled before his arraignment in 2016, but today he pled not guilty to attempted sexual assault and not guilty to attempted sexual conduct with a minor with a failure to appear charge awaiting in justice court. Judge Wonka reminded the defense that Bautista had had a bail set at $100,000 and still fled. The state asked for a bail increase to $250,000. The judge did not feel that was enough and set bail at $400,000 cash. Bautista will be back in Judge Wonka's courtroom on June 4th for a status check on a resolution. A Pahrump woman has been accused of allegedly embezzling a large sum of money from her employer. In July of 2020, the Nye County Sheriff's Office began an embezzlement investigation into Jennifer Walker, who was suspected of stealing over $100,000 from her employer, Two Star Towing, in Pahrump. The business owner reported that Walker, his office manager, had allegedly embezzled over $100,000 from his company between June 2016 and July 2020 when she was terminated. The victim told investigators that Walker was hired as the business office manager in June of 2016. She was responsible and entrusted with entering payroll every two weeks and arranging for employees to be issued paychecks based on their hourly pay rate. She was also entrusted with and responsible for paying the company's bills and was given access to the company's bank account, credit cards, and debit cards. When a new office manager was hired to replace Walker in July of 2020, the new manager discovered that Walker had reportedly altered her pay rate every two weeks for the last four years, resulting in approximately $100,000 in embezzlement. According to the declaration of arrest, Walker had inflated her biweekly paychecks to three and four times her normal paycheck. Investigators observed payroll records that corroborated the statements. Bank statements for 2020 revealed charges for hotels, renter's insurance, and other unauthorized charges and unauthorized purchases. The victim suspected that Walker used his company bank account to pay her personal bills. Jennifer Walker has been arrested for embezzlement, $100,000 or greater. The Rotary Club of Pahrump Valley is throwing its support behind Little League Baseball. The organization has presented Pahrump Valley Little League a check for more than $1,400. We are donating a check from last weekend's Balloon Festival to the Pahrump Valley Little League for the amount of $1,432. One thousand of it was a donation from Rotary and the $432 was the tips that everybody gave us to help support the Little League.
Having this uh, $1,400 donated to us, it will help out a lot um, with the COVID shutdown of last year and then trying to get the season going this year, rolling over players from last year and not receiving very many new um, registrations that really cut into the funds. We had a uh, liquor booth at the festival and because of the problems the Little League had had, we decided that we should step in and make up for their shortfall on their on their booth. Um, we gave them all we could, uh, and I, the people were amazing. People were giving $20 bills. Our tip jar said for the Little League, and they were walking up and sticking $20 bills. Yeah. I mean, the generosity was amazing. We're going to have a fall season coming up here, start registrations um, next month, um, and the uh, season will start in August. Uh, practice as well. The season will start in September. We'll be done before um, Thanksgiving. So it gives them another couple months to play baseball and it moves them up into the next division of playing in next year. And then we normally start doing uh, next spring's registrations in December. We're going to be at the music festival. Uh, stop by and we're going to have hard lemonade and a bunch of other delightful ways of altering your reality. And uh, we'll have fun. We'll tell you what's happening in the business world coming up next from the Business First Brief, so stick around. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. The IRS is cracking down on crypto. Share is up. Oatly are now trading, and the number of Americans filing for unemployment continues to drop. Angela Miles reports. Topping our news, the IRS is getting tougher on Bitcoin. The Treasury Department will require any Bitcoin transferred valued at 10,000 or more to be reported to Uncle Sam. According to the Treasury Department, cryptocurrency already is posing issues of illegal activity, including tax evasion. Call it a 27-year overnight success story. Shares of Oatly began trading on the NASDAQ this week. The company, now popular for its oat milk among celebrities and coffee chain drinkers, has actually been around since the 90s. In our Economy Watch, the number of Americans seeking unemployment recently fell to 444,000. That is a fresh pandemic low. Also, the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index dropped to 31 and a half. That was below the 40.5 economists estimated that indicates a slowdown for factories on the East Coast. The state of Nevada is gearing up for an active fire season. Agency representatives met to discuss current conditions and how they're preparing to handle any wildfires. This is how our drought conditions, which obviously take into account all of the recent precipitation. We are currently in a state of exceptional drought, which is the worst drought, most severe drought classification over southern and eastern Nevada, which is this darker maroon color. The red indicates extreme drought. So again, much of Nevada is still in extreme drought. And then a little bit better conditions towards the Idaho and Oregon borders of moderate drought, but still we are seeing drought concerns statewide. And this really plays a role into our fire season. For one, we are expecting drier fuel moistures that will likely peak early and be on the decline. So much lower fuel moisture is expected throughout the fire season. This also impacts our fine fuel growth across the state. Typically, we do not see a robust green up or new growth of our grasses across Nevada, and that is a big component to our fire season. A lot of our, our live fuel moistures are at average or well below average for this time of year. And you know that, that means it's more susceptible to wildland fire and also more susceptible to damage. So, you know, we encourage everybody to recreate responsibly. And so as the fire season progresses and we see what the, the risk is and we see what the, the human activity is out on our wildlands, um, there is a, there's a high probability of fire restrictions, especially this year, to reduce those threats of human-caused fires. Last year, we saw an all-time high with 67% of our fires being human-caused. In previous years, that's been closer to around the low 40% of our fires being human caused. With the fuels profile that uh, Paul just spoke to, it's gonna be extra diligent that you do your part this year in helping us to prevent those human caused fires. All of our agencies collectively work together in fire response. Um, it's whoever is closest um, 
closest available resources come to the fire so that we ensure that the fire hopefully gets out early and, and stays small. We have agreements in place across the state of Nevada and across all of our agencies, state, federal, local, um, as well as across the country and even outside of the country for response um, to, to beef up if we need to in case of a large fire season. Sanders Family Winery in Pahrump is open again. The winery held a grand opening post-COVID event last weekend with performances celebrating Armed Forces Day. Kim Cornell Lyle says it's good to be back. This is our opening night. It's been a year and a half. Can you believe that? And it's so good not to have to wear a mask and feel good. And we're just having the best time tonight. We have again another full schedule going from now all the way through till the end, almost the end of October. Um, every other Saturday and uh, we've got everything lined up. We've got, uh, let's see, we've got the Carpenters coming for Memorial Weekend. They're going to do a tribute to Memorial Weekend. We've got Soul Town coming back. We've got, um, actually, we've got a Simon and Garfunkel this year and it's a girl and a guy, which is very interesting, but they sound exactly like the duo. So if you're a fan of Simon and Garfunkel, you should come to that. We've got a fantastic jazz night. Um, Uli Gusendorf is going to be here from UNLV with a trio and a fabulous singer, uh, Tosha Carmo, who is just incredible. If you like really good jazz, it's going to be a wonderful night. And we're going to have UNLV Youth Big Band. Wow. And they're going to come and do a 16-piece Big Band night. Fantastic. So we've got so much stuff coming up. Go on the website of Sanders Family Winery. It'll tell you all the dates. It'll give you a little burb of everything that's coming up. And you can get your tickets, call in, and just book your tickets now. Because they're going fast again. Tastings all the time. They're still free, which is amazing in yeah. this economy. So, yeah, if you want to book a tasting, just come on by. And you can buy your cases of wine from here. And yeah. We're back in business in a big way. We really appreciate Perump's support, and we know everybody's going to have a great year this year. The music in the background was the Swing It Girls performing a salute to the armed forces. Perump's own Silver Tappers also took the stage, their first public performance in more than a year. For more information and to see a complete list of upcoming events at Sanders Family Winery, just head to their website, sanderswinery.com. And we'll be back with more News 25. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Happy you're with me tonight. Thanks for sticking around. So do you still need your COVID vaccine? You've got opportunities. On June 1st, the county health nurse in Pahrump will start offering the Pfizer vaccine, which will be available to, to the public ages 12 and up. You can make an appointment by calling 775-751-7070. Moderna and One Dose Janssen are also available. The county is hosting a first dose COVID-19 vaccine pod on Thursday, May 27th from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Emergency Management 1510 Serial lane in Pahrump and no appointment is required. The county provides Moderna and Janssen vaccines, which can only be given to ages 18 and up. And the COVID-19 vaccine is also available at the county health nurse office in Tonopah. If you need more information, just call 775-482-6659. Well, it's no secret the pandemic has affected our lives in many ways. Now, a recent survey takes a look at how our health has been impacted for better or worse. Erica Foreman has more. According to a survey from Cleveland Clinic and Parade Magazine, nearly half of Americans say they've experienced changes in physical and mental health during the pandemic. While the majority of Americans are doing well in terms of their health, there's still room for improvement. And some of the things we should focus on are mental health, sleep, diet, physical activity, the cornerstones of preventive health. While 81% rated their overall health as good or excellent, results suggest the pandemic has taken a mental toll on many. There are certain groups uh, that we need to pay particular attention to in medicine because they're the ones that are really struggling. And those are women, um, our young adults under the age of 35, our families whose total annual income is less than $50,000, and those who are unmarried. 
more than a quarter of respondents say they have a negative view of their day. Many turn to social media to stay connected, but 30% say it makes them feel depressed. And almost 40% say they often go a full day without speaking to another person. Now that many of us have become vaccinated and many of the states have opened up again, it's important to remember to communicate with people and to interact with them in real time. We need those interactions. When it comes to physical activity, more than two-thirds walk at least 30 minutes daily. But nearly 70 percent say they sit more than six hours a day. But the good news is that they recognize that and they were taking steps to take breaks frequently. And some people have invested in standing desks or standing platforms. They're doing their work online, but they are able to stand up. A high percentage of Americans report trying to eat more vegetables, but less than half say they eat at least one green veggie every day. At a minimum, Americans should be getting about three servings a week of vegetables and leafy greens in their diet. But certainly the more, the better. At Cleveland Clinic, I'm Erica Foreman. The survey shows Americans are also struggling with sleep. Nearly 50% say they're not getting enough, with a large number admitting to sleep-sabotaging behaviors like sleeping with their cell phone or watching TV in bed. For today's Save a Pet, we're back inside the cat room at Desert Haven Animal Society, and that's where we catch up with Darby O'Donnell, who introduces us to Butterscotch. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Butterscotch. Butterscotch is a one-year-old orange tabby so cute, um, has a lot of energy, it's extremely friendly, um, loves attention, it loves making mush, go and he purrs in your ear. He's just a little sweetheart, he has beautiful green eyes, just so cute, and he has no gold face, and he's just adorable. If you want to come and see Butterscotch or any of his friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, give them a call ahead of time to make an appointment, 775-751-7020, or you can always look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Hi, it's John Kohler standing out at the KPVM weather window and looking at Fremont Street. Whoa, you're partying it up today, 68 degrees in Fremont. We'll tell you about all the weather coming back. Hi. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. It's Casual Friday, no tie today, looking good. Actually, I feel like a, a weather maitre d'. And look what we're serving up today. Well, we're serving it up cold. Fernley, Fallon, Carson City. You got uh, temperatures in the mid 50s, even worse up to Tonopah uh, and Goldfield. You're uh, just staring at just 45, 47 degrees. Beatty, 57. Amargosa, you're at 64. Las Vegas, 68 degrees. Actually, that sounds pretty pleasant. I like Vegas at 68 degrees. Death Valley, you're down about 40 degrees from yesterday at 76 degree high mark. Here in the paradise of Pahrump, well, let's check it out. 64 degrees is our high today, and that's where, right where we're sitting. So enjoy it while we can. Southwest of the winds, 18 miles per hour. Uh, a little damp, a little humid. Look at that, 22% humidity as the sun rose this morning at 5.32 a.m. It's going away at 7.48. We'll miss you in the sun, night, night. Low tonight, 44 degrees. Easterly winds at 10 miles per hour. That humidity sticking with us. Give us that kind of that damp northwesterly weather. Um, coming up tomorrow, though, check this out. Uh, we got 10 mile per hour winds. That's good. Temperatures increasing a little bit to 69 degrees, up to 78 on Sunday. We're all the way up to the high 80s by Monday with clear skies and 90 degree temperatures for the rest of the week. Winds are going to creep back a little bit from uh, this weekend, but. Uh, a nice weekend to enjoy the variance in the temperature and do that with the one you love. Speaking of which, here's Missy Kohler. Thanks, John. Why does it always seem like the temperatures cool off on the weekend? I would take the rain and the wind and all of that during the week so I could have a nice weekend. And speaking of when, we did see on one of the social media pages today that someone lost their kid's pool due to the wind. So you might want to check your backyard and see what kind of extra prizes the wind might have brought to you. 
That's going to do it for News 25. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you have a lovely weekend. Good night.